Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 660. Why you need an individualized weight loss program. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and I'm going to talk about how to individualize your weight loss program so that it actually works. Now, there, are fad, there have been fad weight loss systems that have never worked for everybody because of one fact, that everybody is not the same. So fads that you read about on uh, TikTok or Facebook or Instagram, don't believe a thing. I mean, you would, it would be unusual if you would be able to lose weight in that way or taking that supplement or just doing one thing to help you lose weight because we just can't devise a program that works for everybody. If you've ever put a, on a one-size-fits-all outfit, it doesn't fit all. And that's exactly what weight loss is like. So you are, you are what you eat. It is about your food. Uh, but what, how you use your food is based on your genetic, genetic program and also medications you take, um, other things in your life, like you've developed a disease like diabetes or heart disease. But we're going to center first on genetics. So think of it this way. If you put the same gas into a Maserati or a Ford Fusion or both, both of those cars and then you drive them, are they going to drive the same with the same gasoline? So they don't. The Maserati is going to go faster, more pickup, and it's going to use more gas than the Fusion. The Fusion is going to go slower, poor pickup, not as good a pickup. Goes, it's going to be a slower burning of the gasoline, so you may get more miles out of it. That's like people. People are all different kinds of cars with different kinds of, um, of ability to burn their calories. So one calorie is not the same calorie to me as it is to somebody else. I hear this a lot, and I have to stop. I'm hoping my patients who I see in the office are watching this because so many patients come in and say, well, I started my pellets the same time my girlfriend did, testosterone and estrogen, and I think I got about the same dose, and she lost 30 pounds, and I haven't lost more than 10. Okay, <laughs> what's, what's wrong with that comparison? <laughs> she and her friend are different genetics, she and her friend don't have the same lifestyle. They have different illnesses that they already have when they come to me. They uh, take different supplements. They exercise in a different manner and, and basically completely different um, expenditure of their calories. So why would one person, just because they started hormones, be exactly like another person? They're not going to be. So. I want, to, I want to go through all the variables that you have to consider when you're looking at a weight loss program for you. And it may not be the same as your husband. It may not be the same as your wife or your children because you all, believe it or not, all have different genetics. So we're individuals, and that's very important to always remember. Um, one of the things, there's, I mean, I, I always remember this event when I was an OBGYN more than... 15 years ago, I was in GYN practice and hormone practice at the same time, but the cabbage soup diet, does anybody ever remember, do they remember that? Do you remember that diet that everybody went on? They ate cabbage soup for a month and they were supposed to lose like 15 pounds? Well, blood type matters in terms of certain foods. And type A people, which St. Louis is mostly type A, that's just a fact, 
for some reason it's more more northern European. We have some southern Europeans, but lots of A's are in St. Louis. And my patients came in complaining because they'd been doing this horrible ca cabbage soup stuff for over a month and they'd gained weight. Well, most of the so A A blood type does not metabolize cabbage very well. In fact, it slows their metabolism. So maybe if you were an O or a B, you could lose weight, some weight, on a cabbage soup diet. Nobody ever loses as much as they say they're going to lose. And But A's gained weight. It was the wrong food for them. And, and we have evidence of that in our blood type diet. A's aren't supposed to eat cabbage. So because it slows their metabolism. So that's another evidence or another piece of evidence that you may be familiar with where you may have tried that and it didn't work. So trial and error is how we used to learn what to do with our diets, but now we have other tools. One of the tools is genetic testing. We can test our genetics to see a lot of different things about our metabolism. Some of us burn calories when we're sleeping. Some of us don't. Some of us have, are always hungry. Some of us are never full. All of these things are genetically programmed into our genes, and they determine how we burn calories and how we can lose weight if we have to. So here are the, here are the different factors that you have to think about and we have to think about when we're devising a, a medical weight loss program for you. We have to look at your genetic programming, and we do have a test that we can look at that will t I'll give you more details on that for uh, on what it tells you about how to lose weight. We have to look at your blood type, so we have to have some blood drawn, know what your blood type is. Your age matters. We slow our metabolism as we get older. Um, if we're taking hormones or not, that matters too, because hormones, especially testosterone, speeds up our metabolism, makes our muscles burn calories more. So that's very important to whether we're going to lose weight faster or not. Um, your medical history and your current diseases, that, that matters, not just because of the, of the medications that you take that can slow your metabolism, but also that matters because there are certain diseases such as um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes has insulin resistance, which makes it very hard to lose weight. So we have to try harder if we have insulin resistance already. So that's just one of the examples. Your current weight and your diet now. That matters because if you're starting out and you're a female and you're five foot three and you weigh 180 pounds, you may lose the first 10 pounds pretty quickly. After that, it's going to be really hard. If you're somebody who's same height and weighs 140 and wants to weigh 130, just because that's what they've always, you've always weighed, then that's going to be, take a little longer. Although you've got more lean body mass. If you've got more muscle, you can burn more calories faster, but you're at the end. You're trying to get down below what is even maybe healthy for you, so that's a lot harder. So that's going to be a slower weight loss. Some of the medications you take for, your, for any of your conditions, even over the counter, are not your friend. A lot of them slow your metabolism down. We'll talk about that as well. Certain supplements help you lose weight. So certain, they don't stall you out. In general, supplements are going to supplement your diet and make you more normal so that your metabolism is better. And then we come back to exercise, physical movement, and how often you exercise, how long you exercise, how, how active you are in your exercise. If you're walking around the block talking to everybody, that's not exercise. You may pretend it's exercise. That's not going to get you where you want to go. You've got to get on a treadmill, a step machine, an elliptical. You have to, you also have, the best exercise actually is interval training. You use, you use weights and then you get on a machine and you do that for a certain number of minutes. Then you use weights for a certain number of minutes in a different uh, area of your, basically you do upper body, lower body. You change the areas of your body that you're working and you do that for an hour. And that's the most effective way to lose weight. So having said all of this, I'd like to start with inheritance. You know, we can't really change our uh, genes. We can turn some of our genes off by good behavior, basically, by having really good habits. We can turn some of the bad genes off. I, I'm, an, I'm evidence of that because I have 
uh, three out of five genes that say I should be obese and I'm not and I haven't been. So I've been able to turn those genes off and you can do that, but you still are basically your own genetic structure. You have to know what that is in, in order to actually learn how to eat and how to exercise to benefit you. It may not benefit your spouse, but it benefits you, and you have to know that. There are so many genetic variables that are very important. Um, our genetic test that we have is by Gen, um, it's by Gen X, and it is basically, um, it looks at many of the different genes that help with metabolism and weight loss, but it also helps with, it looks for diseases that cause uh, weight gain. So one of the um, tests that they, that they give you a report that's 65 pages long, not all of it is essential to memorize, but some of it is really important, like, do you need to eat more carbs than fat, more fat than carbs, more protein than anything else? What is the best food division of what you eat for you. Basically, what is the healthiest way to eat? So, for example, my genes show that I should eat 40%, 40% fat. Believe it or not, that's my healthiest diet. So I try to comply. But I eat my fat that are healthy fats, avocados, nuts, uh, olive oil. A lot. So they're healthy fats. I'm not talking about eating a fatty steak. I don't eat the fat off a steak. I eat the steak and I cut off the fat. I'm not talking about animal fat, I'm talking about healthy fat. So that is my genetic perfect diet, 40% fat and 35% carbohydrate, which I think is a little high, but if you add up your day and you add in fruit and vegetables as carbohydrates, yeah, that's, that's about right for me. And 25% or a quarter of my calories should be in protein. And that's, that's also sounds... Right, and that's what I try to do since I've gotten my genes tested. It kind of looks like a little round, looks like a little circle that is divided into the percentages of what you should eat, and they color them differently so they're more entertaining. But they also in this told me, they tell you how many meals you should eat a day for you. Like for me, I should eat three meals a day, and I should eat two snacks, and the snacks should be fruit and nuts. Who knew? You know, I mean, that's usually what I've tended to do, but I'm, I'm old, so I've I spent lots of years figuring out what I feel best after eating. So that's important. And then I'm supposed to drink two liters of water in between meals. So when I'm not eating food, I have to drink at least two liters, and I drink more than that. But that counts uh, tea. That counts the water and coffee. You know, so those are all sources of water, so you have to count that, and I'd probably drink twice that much. But I have to have at least two liters, so that's important to know. Some people don't get two liters a day, and, and you can't burn fat without that. So these are pieces of information that I've been I have found out by doing my genetics. Another thing is, do I benefit for, from exercise for weight loss? Okay, so some people, exercise is going to help their heart and it's going to make their brain feel better and they'll think better and better vessels, but it may not help you lose weight, believe it or not. But for me, which is not necessarily the easiest thing for me to do, is I need to exercise and I need to exercise enough that I can get to my ideal weight or stay there. So exercise is important genetically for me, but it may not be for other people. So that's, not everybody has to go crazy and exercise to actually get healthier. It um, also shows that exercise would benefit my HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and, and bring my good cholesterol up. But I don't have cardiovascular disease, so my cardiac calcium scan is zero. So I don't really need to have a high HDL to protect me just because I don't make plaque. So having said that, that's just an example of what you can find out. There's many other things, like they'll even tell you which foods to eat that are best for you. And things like, do you metabolize alcohol normally? Or do you, does it stay in your body for a long time? Or does it go really fast through your body? It'll tell you how you metabolize that and coffee. Um, also, it, well, 
some of these other things, they'll tell you if you have the, the genetics for celiac disease, which is intolerance of gluten, and if you have a fructose intolerance. I guess some people have fruit intolerance, fructose intolerance. So um, they, they test you for lactose intolerance, and I've got that totally. So the other thing is, it's very interesting. We are genetically um, programmed to need certain supplements to our diet. So they go through all the vitamin supplements that genetically I need to add to my diet and all the mineral supplements that I need to add to my diet. And then the ones that I don't need to add to my diet, I don't have to take. So that in that way, that kind of saves me time and energy. So other things that, that you can find out genetically, do you burn calories when you're asleep? One of the ways you can find that out without a genetic test is, are you warm while you're sleeping? Do you, are you freezing when you wake up? I mean, are your hands cold? Are you cold? Or are you one of those people that generates heat while they sleep? And that's really a benefit to generate heat while you're sleeping because you're burning calories while you're asleep. That's ideal. So, and you stay warm. Warmth is very important for being healthy because all your enzymes shut down if you get cold. It's one of the reasons why hypothyroidism, thyroid makes your, ma makes your body um, make heat out of, blood, out of sugar. Basically, it makes energy, makes heat, because your thyroid tells, you, tells the cells to do that with its, with its hormones. And so if you don't have enough of that, then you're cooler or colder than other people, and you don't, your enzymes can't work. They're not... It's not warm enough in your body for them to actually repair your cells and break down junk, junk cells that need to get out of your body and build new ones. So it's very important to have your uh, thyroid hormone work. Um, how much, we talked about how much of each type of food you eat, but they also, they, your genes also tell you, are you a nervous eater? Do you get, are, when you're anxious, do you eat? That's actually genetic. It's not your fault. It's just, just, in your genes, you inherited it. Um, there are some people that always feel hungry, and I feel sorry for those folks because I can't even, when I was pregnant, I was always hungry. I mean, food ran my life. I had to, I had to get to, honest, I confess, I went to McDonald's. I went anywhere that I could get food in between hospitals where I was doing rounds or I was delivering babies. I had to get food because I had this, this hunger that just wouldn't stop. I, and you don't have to guess. I only gained 30 pounds during my pregnancy. So it wasn't like I was overeating. I was just eating enough to make a baby, a placenta, and all that fluid. But I just seemed hungry all the time. I was so relieved when I was not pregnant anymore and not hungry. So when people are genetically like that, I really feel compassion for, for you. Uh, some people are genetically never full. So you've, you've seen those folks. They can go back for like three rounds of food and you think you would just probably throw up at the second round. So they just don't feel the fullness and that's another genetic thing they have to fight when they need to lose weight. Um, so how much lean muscle mass do you have? And that's kind of a genetic thing. Some people inherit the ability to have a lot of muscle from the time they're little. They just have a better muscle mass it's somewhat, um, it, it's definitely genetic. It, it actually is um, passed down from one of your parents to have really good muscles. My, mine is from my dad. My dad had the same muscle structure and everything that I have. And some people are built with less muscle. So the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism burns your calories and the better you can actually use your body to exercise and burn calories. So Lean body mass is very important. Um, let's see. So basically, your food chart helps you. Let's talk about age for a second. We always are thinner when we're younger. So if you are overweight when you're 20, you need to pay attention and get an individualized plan so you will lose weight now so that you won't be morbidly obese by the time that you're 50. You all, we always slow our metabolism down as we get older. And over 50, when we hit menopause, we become insulin resistant. So every carb that passes our lips basically uh, is not making 
energy, it's making fat. So unless we replace our hormones and we activate our muscles and we activate um, our estrogen receptors, we're going to be gaining 10 to 20 pounds at menopause. So that's another plus for wanting to get your estrogen and testosterone replaced. For men, it's usually about age 55, and age 55, testosterone, free, free testosterone drops. So you feel that fatigue, you start gaining fat, and your estrogen goes up, so you get belly fat. That goes up with both men and women as we age. So we have to counteract that with exercise and proper diet and hormones. Your growth hormone decreases with age, and growth hormone is really important for replacing cells, even in your brain, in your bones, in your, in your muscles, making your cells turn over so you have new cells. So growth hormone runs that, but testosterone stimulates growth hormone, which is very nice. So we don't have to always treat growth hormone. We treat with testosterone, and growth hormone goes up. That means people get leaner. They lose fat. They gain muscle which doesn't necessarily mean they lose weight, but they lose size. They get more compact. So testosterone helps with that. No hormones means you are, women are going to get osteoporosis over time. You don't build your, if you don't have estrogen, you don't have testosterone, you don't build your muscle as fast as it's breaking down. So there's a, there's a net loss of, of bone and muscle, and muscle decreases because you're not using your muscles, but also because your bone is getting thinner, so your muscles aren't working as well either, and they usually atrophy as well. So that's where the testosterone and estrogen hormones come in, into play, and they help with osteoporosis, but also keeping your muscles strong so that you stay erect, that you're not like bent over or using a walker or immobile. Um, so the things that you can do to lose weight besides know what the perfect program for you is, is you need to drink enough water. You need to drink half your weight in ounces of water. So if you weigh 140, you need to drink 70 ounces of water a day. So it's easy to figure out. Now, if it's hot outside, if you're sweating, you need quite a bit more, maybe the same ounces as your weight because you're losing water all the time. Um, Another thing is you need to eat cleanly. Everybody needs to eat cleanly because we have so many preservatives and junk in our food that we need to eat whole foods, not processed foods, not food that's already cooked for us, not food that's in a plastic tray. You have to, you have to actually make meat, salad, a vegetable, some fruit. I mean, it has to be well-balanced, and you should be making your meals out of real food, not stuff in bags, not stuff in boxes. Um, if you eat a lot of carbs, uh, more carbs than you are supposed to, and you eat a lot of sugary things, you're setting yourself up for failure for any diet. You have to stop that for, for getting to an ideal weight. There are very few people who can have a primarily heavy carb uh, diet or sugary diet that can actually stay at ideal weight and be healthy because high, high sugar means high blood sugar, means fat, means insulin resistance. It also uh, means that uh, you're not going to be able to lose weight. Insulin resistance keeps you from being able to lose weight. You just make more fat. Every time you eat a carb, it gets worse. So eating processed carbs, donuts, cereal. Cereal should be out of your house. Honestly, it's the worst thing we've ever created. So, I mean, you can have some bread, but I mean... Bread's better than a cereal. Cereal's got sugar and all kinds of junk in it, and it has preservatives. And um, when they say that it's fortified, that does not mean it's with good vitamins. It's just junk. Your body can't use it. So if you eat a lot of carbs, you're going to have diabetes. You're going to have Alzheimer's. You're going to have dementia. You're uh, going to be obese. You're not going to be able to sit in a <laughs> sit in a, an airplane. I mean, it's basically you've limited your life. You're also going to get viral illnesses and, and bacterial illnesses. So eating carbs and having cancer loves carbs, infections love carbs. I mean, that was not what we were meant to eat unless we were going to work on a farm. If you're going to go out and work all day, then you can have your carbs, but I still wouldn't eat sugary carbs. I would eat complex carbs. So that means something that's slower to metabolize. It doesn't stimulate your insulin and cause insulin resistance so much, and you burn those calories off that day. 
Do you sit all day? Do you not move? We were meant to be moving all the time, not just sitting and thinking, but moving. So if you have a job that makes you sit, then you're going to have to get up every couple hours, move around, do sit-ups, run in place, do something to get your body back in action, and then schedule uh, some kind of an exercise every day. And besides exercise, I mean, we've drummed, drummed that into everybody. Um, there are certain diseases and certain medications that cause us to gain weight. So if our endocrine glands aren't working, if our thyroid's not working, if our pancreas is an is a exocrine gland, but it also produces insulin, so it's, if it's not balanced, if you have a, a pituitary that doesn't work, Basically, any of the endocrine glands, your adrenal gland, if they're off balance, then especially if the adrenal is high, you have a lot of cortisol, that makes you gain fat. If you have no um, thyroid, that makes you gain fat and slows your metabolism down to nothing. If you have no muscle, which is no testosterone, that slows your metabolism down too. So if you have diabetes... You have, you have insulin resistance and your pancreas isn't working very well. If you have low thyroid, you're more apt to gain weight if you don't get that thyroid replaced properly. Um, if you have liver and kidney disease, you can't get rid of all of the um, junk that comes with our food and comes with living in our environment. Our liver filters it all. Our kidneys filter the rest. And so if you have liver and kidney disease, you're not cleaning your body out, and so that's more likely to make you sicker. So it's best to follow whatever diet and exercise program your doctors tell you to do. Heart disease um, has been told, we've been given the wrong message, heart disease should not be treated with low proteins. It should be treated with low carbs. Just remember that. It's not about eggs. It's about donuts. So if you don't want to get heart disease, then don't eat the sugary junk in the bakery. I've given you a lot of things to think about. Um, there are some medications that cause you to lose weight. We'll deal with that in a different um, health cast. But I want you to think about maybe getting a genetic test to tell you exactly how to eat and exactly how to exercise. And then once you know it, do it. I mean, this should be your motivation. You now know where, how you can get to your goal, so then do it. And then if you're, if you're older and your hormones have gone away, then you need to have them replaced. You need to find somebody who can replace them in a healthy way. So this should be something that gives you your quality of life back for the rest of your life. And that's what I'm looking for for my patients. I'm looking for for you to keep your quality of life till you're 100, as long as you can possibly live, and live on your own and independently. I hope this helped you plan the rest of your life. Uh, please join us in two weeks when we come back and we talk about some other very interesting, healthy subjects. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.